Hey everybody, welcome to the Dungeon Cast. I'm Brian. And I'm William. This is the podcast where we talk about all things tabletop role-playing games. Today we are talking about Old Hydra, the princess of elemental evil water. One, two, Hey, Brian. Hey, Will. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm, I am finally healed from the plague. My God, man. <laughs> My gods. I was sick for like two and a half weeks. I still have a little soreness. If people might be able to hear it over the mic. Um, but I'm mostly like 95% better. Yeah. Um, uh, thank you guys so much for being patient with indeed. us while we scrap together an episode. Thank you, Brian, um, for doing that. Yeah, we, we're all over <laughs> it. Um, yeah. My... my if if only I hadn't missed that one episode last year, my Iron Man streak would still be strong. Which which episode did you miss? I'm trying uh, to remember. Uh, you did one an interview. Oh, I did an interview. Yes, yes, yes. The with kids the, D&D. the kids D and D thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry about your Iron Man streak. Oh well, <laughs> I'm <laughs> it st- happens. I'm still batting like a 98 percent or yeah, something 99. like that. Yeah, 99. Let's say 99 <laughs> for sure. Pretty good. But well, um, but yeah, thanks guys. Really appreciate it. We're getting to the uh, the PO box letters finally this week. Indeed. Um, there's one we're going to physically respond to as well. Oh. Oh, sweet. Spo- sounds good. Spoilers for Spoilers. later. Yeah, that sounds, um, sounds good to me. We're, we are obligated per what is in there to okay. do it. And you'll see why. Okay. Um, it's all new and surprising to me, folks. So it's very new. Yeah, we. I, I let Will be surprised. Yes. I read some of these. We're going to read uh, the other ones that I haven't yet today. But thank you, guys. Um, let's get to it. Hail Hydra. I'm so excited that we're finally <laughs> doing Marvel stuff. Uh, we're not doing Marvel stuff. I didn't know there stuff. was an O in there. Is the O so they know? It's not- <laughs> It's not just to know. There's also an L. It's old Hydra. Old old Hydra, old, like the one before Captain. Good old Hydra. <laughs> no, uh, this uh, fortunately does not have anything to do with Hydra from Marvel Comics or Marvel Studios. Uh, this is all D and D, all the way down. Thank you. And uh, I will remind you and the audience that it is Year of the Elemental. That's right. And I don't know if I have ever mentioned it on this show, um, but I love elemental stuff. Oh, like, yeah. like I really love elemental stuff. Yeah, I mean, my first stint with elemental stuff was probably uh, Avatar: like, Last Airbender, Golden Sun, oh, then the Avatar: Golden The Last Sun. Airbender. Okay, good. Yeah, good, where good I was start. like, oh, yeah. the four elements. Whoa. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I guess for me, it goes all the way back to to the old Final Fantasy games. Oh uh, yeah, that would have been a good my, one. My deep childhood. But um, whether it's the base four elements or the pair elements of ice and magma, quasi elements of mist and lightning, I just love elements. I think they're they're thematic. They lend themselves very well to high fantasy adventure. Uh, so for me, it's personally been a joy to research a lot of this year's topics already, even though we're, we're still very early in the year. And I, yeah, I just want to say that. I love elemental stuff. I love Year of the Elemental. Same. Big <laughs> big stuff. Uh, um, it's really cool getting to learn the D&D side of it. Yes. Fun. Yes. Uh, and a lot depth. of a lot of really old school first edition D&D stuff is very elemental. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So uh, the elements themselves may be completely neutral and even unaligned by nature. But this is not true of all elementals. Some elementals do indeed align with the forces of good and or the forces of evil. And today's topic uh, topic focus is one such elemental. An elemental that aligns so hard, she is known as one of the elemental evils. Uh, her name is Ol' Hydra, and she is the princess of evil water and water elementals. And as her title implies, she is in fact quite evil. Yeah, okay. So let's get into it. Well, before, sorry. Okay, before, before we before get into we do, it, go ahead. Um, so Imix is one of the elemental evils as well? Yes. So the, the these elemental evils are a category of element, elementals called uh, archomentals. Right, okay. Right? Archimentals. And there is, as far as I know, there's one for each of the four um, base elements. And then there's also Cryonax, who's, who's just ice. Yeah, a random shoe-in. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's just, and he's trying to make ice the fifth element. And you yeah. know what? More power to him, I guess. Freezer Gorgon. He's de- yeah, Freezer Gorgon. He's <laughs> definitely Demon Gorgon's like... <laughs> nephew or something he looks right like, like yeah. he definitely looks like it but anyways <laughs> our focus is on the world of water the unfrozen version of ice Got it. and okay. uh Ol hydra so Ol hydra the princess of evil water is a powerful archimental from the elemental plane of water she is known as the princess of evil water creatures princess of watery evil mistress of the black tide the crushing wave the dark tide and the well of endless anguish Ooh. In her most often depicted state, she appears as a huge cresting wave, roughly 20 feet. Or six meters. High and 15 feet. That's 4.5 meters, folks. Wide, weighing roughly 5,000 pounds. 2,267 kilograms. With two eyes like large pearls. There's no metric for pearls. No, there's no. Pearls are just pearls. 
Oh, Hydra has been described as an endlessly breaking wave of water cascading across the ground, furiously churning and smashing everything in its path. This huge amorphous blob of liquid seems to have almost human-like features buried within its depth. So just like a tsunami. Yeah, just like a tsunami with a face. Yeah, <laughs> that's scary. It is scary. It's quite scary, actually. I saw a cool video with lots of different tsunamis over the ages and their estimated heights. Um, and they, you know, they'll put it next to like the Eiffel Tower or whatever. Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh uh, man. Which the Eiffel Tower is very tall. The Eiffel Tower is very tall, and to have tsunamis taller than that is that's, is very horrifying. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, it's terrifying as hell. Um, uh, the, the twenty foot tsunami is nothing to. That is a tsunami. No, that's a very big wave, but yes. it's also a wave you could surf. Yeah, I mean, they're all waves you can. Oh, Hydra is very surfable. I've seen people surf fifty foot waves. <laughs> yeah, see, that's crazy. That's I've seen that's people eat it on them too, and that's Woo! not great. No, that's not great. Nah, man. Have I ever told you surfing? And this is probably gonna get surfing is a thing I've always dreamed of learning to do proficiently. Oh, I've never done it. I know we're SoCal. We live near the beach, near yeah. enough to the beach. It's just all. It's always been a dream of mine that I've just never followed up on. Don't go after the rain. I won't because okay. that's bad. I, I didn't know that. Yeah, all the uh, detritus gets pushed out into the That makes the a ocean. lot of sense. Yes. So give it a week or two. Yeah, don't um, go after the rain. And protect Rule your number one. Protect your nipples. Oh yeah, you know I'm wearing the whole suit. I got to go dude, out there. Dude, I did the it way. the first time I went surfing and yeah. my nipples hurt so bad. <laughs> Tell me more. <laughs> I'm kidding. There's nothing more There's here. Nothing more to tell. No. Okay, let's get back to all Hydra. So there are two more physical depictions of the Princess of Evil Water, and they are as follows. Um, all Hydra appears in the form of a swirling mass of seawater. When it suits her, though, she can transform into a beautiful blue-skinned sea nymph whose gray-green eyes swirl like stormy seas. Those who witness her in this form are drawn to her, yet in her eyes they can see power and wickedness. Okay, so no. they look, it looks evil when yeah. you see it. Yeah, it's like alluring, but obviously evil as hell. You look strong in a bad way. Got you it. look strong in a bad way. Um, Ohydra surges forth tirelessly and relentlessly. She delights in creating dangerous and destructive manifestations of elemental water, especially maelstroms and floods. She's eager to assert her power by smashing any vessel that dares venture into her realm and lays waste to villages or towns established within her reach. Ohydra erodes that which she cannot batter down and drown. She is patient, retreating into the f in the face of adversity, only to return stronger than before. Okay. Are we um, going to get into, like, yeah. is, is this an ocean-based creature? I know it's the elemental plane of evil... Like evil, it's evil water. Evil water. Is that just all water? Because a, a tsunami most, implies the ocean. Yeah, it is all water. But yes, she uh, in the in, in the next paragraph, I say uh, Olhydra prefers to remain in or near large bodies of water, seas, lakes, rivers, sometimes great subterranean pools. Uh, but when we're talking about the the plane of water, there's there's like there's the border plane, and then there's the deep plane, right? And so mm. the border plane is like this big open ocean and you'll see some islands and stuff and you know there there might there's a sky and a sun but the water's deep and the life is plentiful here okay and then you have as you go out further and further um and what this looks like is up for debate i've seen it described a few ways but there stops being a sky there stops being anything but water everything is water in all directions oh. and that's the deep plane of water and so she 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 uh she can and does roam and, and exist throughout this entire plane of existence i wonder what that her event horizon looks like yeah i come. just picture it like the, the water just must curve until finally you reach a wall right and it's just a wall of ocean that goes up forever but then you can ride I guess gravity would gravity, stop you. Gravity from... would stop you from going up, but I don't know. It, the the planes, the elemental planes specifically, are are a place where the rules of of reality really seem to break. Yeah, I'm because I'm, I'm trying to um, picture how I would describe it to a player mm -hmm. crossing that threshold mm -hmm. if they need to go there. Maybe just a lot of waves start rolling in and you get tossed under. Yeah, and eventually, and no matter when, how high you go, yeah, you can't exactly. get back. Yeah, I like that. That's actually a really nice transition. Kind of some. Um, like uh, Black Pearl stuff. And, yeah. You know, and they flip the map or whatever yeah, that thing. What yeah, is that they, scene? They, they flip, flip upside down and they're they all underwater. Upside down and, and the boat all... flips over. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a long time, man, but I know the scene you're talking about. Man. <laughs> I'm back to drawing on pirates. It also reminds me of the 88th and uh, 80, 88th and 89th uh, Abyssal Layers. Uh, you, funny that you bring up uh, those layers. Uh, 
or and maybe not those layers specifically, but it's funny that you bring up the abyss because a certain demon lord is going to show up today. Hell yeah. Let's keep going. Ohydra is a surprisingly creative and wistful entity with a rough and turbulent demeanor and a passion for life. Sometimes, though, she is calm and serene with the capacity for thoughtful reflection. Her foulness temporarily darkens the water she passes through, which I'm not sure if that means she just smells bad or she's just so evil. She causes like an evil miasma to follow wherever she goes. Okay. You know, I wonder what happens when you drink that soup. Don't. Don't drink the soup, bro. <laughs> Well, Hydra harbors an intense hatred of Imix. Cool. Uh, as he does of her, as we talked in the Imix episode. Yeah. And nurses her enmity through constant schemes to destroy him. Uh, this goal is so all-consuming that it sometimes prevents her from uh, tending to the needs of her own plane. Uh, she spends a great deal of time hiding in her palace, consulting with her numerous water-weird advisors, and plotting her next attack against Imix. Now, I find these numerous water-weird advisors who were brought up many times across quite a few sources is do you know what a water weird is let's no, start there no, no, no. so okay water weirds are water elementals okay that usually in my experience take on the form of like a, a dragon or a serpent like a sea serpent just all soupy uh just made of water yeah just okay. made of water um but the only thing that makes a water weird different from a normal water elemental in my experience is that they're usually bound to a single pool of water and they 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 can extend themselves out but only so far, and they can never leave that pool of water. The water temple boss. The water From temple Ocarina boss is a water. Yes, absolutely. Except for that one has like that organic kind of like part of it. Yeah, it has it like you, a weird. If you ignore that, then yes, it's a water weird, very much so. Okay. Um, but the thing about water weirds is, in my experience and everything I've ever read about them, is they're not particularly intelligent, and elementals in general aren't particularly intelligent. Yet she has these water weird advisors, and I want to know more, but they haven't written more. It's they're all they're all chemistry no no composition of organic brain matter yeah I, i'm not sure what why these water weirds are different from other water weirds and smart enough to advise a demigod but they are and that's cool and i want to know more about them yeah me but, too but yeah moving on so surprisingly she gives little thought to ben hadar the good archimental who shares her plane her single-minded pursuit of imix and ben hadar's indifference toward her ensure that the two water are Archimentals maintain a detached neutrality toward each other. And it's at this point that I ask myself, what the fuck is the point of the Archimentals of good? They don't do anything. Okay, The one who, so far we've, ta we've talked about two. I don't even remember the Fire One's name, but Imix beat the shit out of him, and he's basically nothing now. Okay. Ben Hadar just ignores Ohydra. So how good is he? You could think of it, I guess, like... One of them is just doing what fire should do or what water should do. The other one is just evil. Yeah, right. <laughs> so it's right. not really good. It's more yeah. like a neutral entity. Yeah, they they come across, Ben Hadar comes across as a neutral entity, but he's supposed to be the good archimental of water. Maybe good by comparison. He's, yeah, <laughs> he's good by comparison. <laughs> um, <laughs> so anyways, moving on. Um, oh, I just shares the elemental plane of water with the deities. Blip -dool -poop. It's been a while. It's been a while. Poop. Oh, I got it in one, though. Did you hear that? Uh, yeah, you nailed it. <laughs> um, which, for those who don't know who that is, that is one of the made-up deities of the Kuotoa. The Kuotoa have this whole thing where they make up deities and they believe in them so fervently they, they come they into manifest, being. They manifest, which is they how manifest. it works. They actually have a better understanding of how to do deities than a lot that, of that's cultures in d, &D. how it works. I mean, it, it is how it works because it does work. Right, yeah, yes. clearly. Uh, you're, you're, you're very right. So Blip Dool Pulp is like the main Kuotoa. To a goddess. <laughs> um, then there's also Iedro and Persana. They're not two uh, gods I'm familiar with, but the uh, Ohydra does share the plane of water with them. Okay. And occasionally, uh, Ohydra comes into conflict with them, although she lets nothing distract her for long, and her dedication to Imix's eradication. Right on. So, Ohydra counts Dagon, a demon lord who resides on the 89th layer of the Abyss, the as homie. one of her greatest allies. The homie Dagon. Fist bump to the homie. Fist bump to the homie. Ru rumors hold that the two are lovers and might have sired twin daughters. Do I hear Daddy Dagon? Yeah. Is that a Daddy Dagon? Deep Daddy. Deep Daddy Dagon. He... <laughs> Whoa. I can't, I can't keep making those jokes. <laughs> Deep within Old Hydra's coral fortress lurks a trio of sea hags called the Blue Coven. Okay. Uh, although they once unsuccessfully attempted to control Old Hydra, she respected their tenacity and accepted them as loyal worshippers. Instead of destroying them, like mm -hmm. you would kind of expect her to do, the coven long ago merged into a single entity with three distinct bodies, granting it magical power and access to dark secrets known only to it. And that's really all I have on the blue coven. Oh, okay. Um, 
one entity used to be three sea hags super devoted to El hydra dude hags are strong hags they, are strong they get randomly up to some nasty nasty they, stuff they are they are indeed nasty they're the harbingers of uh, incursions and like all kinds of stuff yeah they they get up to dirty work for sure um and then there so there's this thing called the coral throne right so we've talked about genies We've talked about the, there's four of the basic types, and in the plane of water, the water genies of the Merids, right? Mm -hmm. um, apparently, there is a localized, like central power structure of Merids, uh, with the the top Merid, the Grand Sultan, maybe of the Merids. I couldn't find my, more information on this, so there's a little conjecture here. Okay, but uh, it called the Coral Throne. Okay, and apparently, the Coral Throne traditionally pays lip service to Ohydra. Uh, but the chaotic nature of the Merids and the frequent turnover in their leadership make them unreliable allies at best. All right. So the, basically, from the DM standpoint, it's like you could totally have like the Merids team up with Ohydra or vice versa. You could totally have the Merids betray Ohydra and now it's a civil war. Like, Ooh. Fun stuff yeah. you could work with. But but yeah, Merids are naturally chaotic neutral. So um, yeah, I could see them being unreliable. Um, Ohydra, the princess of water evil, lives in the ruins of a castle made of black coral submerged in a great indigo canyon on the elemental plane of water. An army of evil water elementals and lesser water weirds keeps a faithful watch over her grand citadel, which they claim was once the capital of a great undersea empire conquered ages ago. Okay, that's fucking cool. It's pretty, pretty neat. Um, of all the princes of elemental evil, Ohydra is the most interested in mortals. Uh, she recognizes pirates and seafaring raiders as her agents, whether they know it or not, uh, because they redden the water with blood and occasionally drop treasure into her clutches. <laughs> she sometimes spares the very worst of them, knowing that they will deliver others to her. Oh, some lucky pirates are actually just like they might unknowing be agents of Ohydra. Yeah, they might be favored of Ohydra and not know it or know it, you know, yeah, one way maybe. or another. Yeah. Um, Ohydra has the largest cult amongst the Archimentals, and it's no secret that she wishes to ascend to true divinity. Uh, the large diversity of the sea of sea life on the material plane helps to ensure this surplus of worshippers, and she counts uh, Sahagan, Sahagan, Scrag, Sea Hags, Kraken, Sea Wolves, Eyes of the Deep, and many other sea creatures among her faithful. Um, because of her cult size, she's closer to becoming a deity. She's closer to becoming a deity than the other evil archimentals. Uh, she commands legions of evil water elementals, water grooves, water methods, callers from the deep, and as well as renegade a renegade sect of Hezrau demons that she lured away from Demogorgon. Shout out to Demogorgon. Shout out to Demogorgon. Um, that is unfortunate. Demogorgon not gonna like that. No, but. But Dagan might be like, yo, bro, she's my girlfriend, though. Let it let it slide. That's that's true. It's like, hey, we look, have kids, dude. Turn your four eyes away on this instance, for she is deep like me. Indeed. Yeah. We can all be homies. I can she's see, my girlfriend. She's my girlfriend, bro. No, I can see Demon Guard being like, yeah, whatever, fine. I don't know. I'll just make some more. I, I'll just make some more. The like, demon lords don't make. I guess they could bake demons. They can they raise them. They can raise them up okay. from lesser stuff. But yeah, they don't. The abyss. The abyss makes demons spontaneously generate. And them, then yes. the abyss. The each layer makes. Do they come from like the depths of the abyss, or do they come from the each layer as the each layer should be capable shitting of shitting out some demons? Uh, yes. So my understanding is they can both spontaneously generate, and they also um, can be formed from the souls of those who end up here, the chaotic evil souls yeah. that end up, end up here. So, so the, uh, there's some gateway between the 89th layer and the elemental plane of water from what I'm understanding from this. So there could, could be, there could just be demons rampant in the ocean. I think, yeah, there has to be some sort of traversal that, and honestly, that's not surprising because the plane of fire has a lot of portals to the nine house. Yeah. So, okay. The, the plane of water probably has a lot of portals, whether they were created by, Bile Hydra on purpose, or maybe they naturally happen. Yeah, the way to the shadow tides sea. of yeah. blah, blah, blah. Exactly. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So now we jump over to fourth edition lore for a Hydra. Neat. Uh, mostly because it's tied in with 4E's version of the elemental chaos and the 4E Dawn Pantheon. Okay. Um, and because we kind of have to keep those things in mind, we will just, you know, this is just fourth edition lore. Um, so let's Your get favorite. into it. 
Your, the taste uh, mostly, your, usually. Your favorite food. Dude, you could talk a lot of shit about 4E. You really can. And, like, I'll even admit that there are many flaws in 4E, but 4E lore rocks, and I don't care what anyone says. It's literally my favorite D&D setting is 4th edition. I trust you as, as a person that does a and d lore show. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, since the dawn of time, the princes of elemental evil have ruled over the swirling chaos of creation. When the gods were young, the princes expanded their power to the far, far reaches of the elemental chaos. Exiled to their forgotten keeps after the Dawn War, these entities now seek to reclaim their lost status through service to the Elder Elemental Eye, which is secretly a virus too. Mm. Uh, though pirates and sea captains worship a number of different gods, it is the name of Ohydra that they silently curse when violent seas sunder their ships. Since the dawn of time, the Princess of Elemental Waters commanded the seas of the Elemental Chaos, and until Melora, she is a the Four E's premier like nature goddess. Okay. Uh, both of sea and of land. Okay, uh, all nature? All, all stuff. nature, all all the time. Okay. Uh, Melora claimed her sphere of influence. Ohydra was the lurking threat that within the world's oceans. Uh, like the other princes of elemental evil, Ohydra seeks to unleash the limitless power of the elder elemental eye. For Ohydra, this drive for power is a thirst that she cannot quench. Mm. Since the end of the Dawn War, Ohydra has remained banished to her coral keep, which Melora casts down into a wide chasm in a, in a black sea in the elemental chaos. Ohydra's agents seek a way to release her from her sealed chambers. A wide variety of elemental beasts inhabits the areas inside and outside Ohydra's keep, including a kraken that patrols the outlying waters, listening to Ohydra's song and devouring any interlopers who come too near the fortress's walls. Um, Ohydra is the princess of elemental water who force is, whose forces tear ships apart in the seas, smash mountains down into dust, and drown any who would dare claim dominion over the oceans. For her keep in the deepest reaches of the elemental chaos, she commands her servants to seek the power of the Elder Elemental Eye. Ohydra's command over water serves her well in combat. She is able to engulf and drown her enemies in a swirling mass. The area around her is as violent as a stormy sea, knocking attackers to the ground. Her indomitable will makes her difficult to control in combat. As with her elemental servants, magical cold can freeze her body and make it brittle to follow out blows. If she's badly wounded, she goes berserk, rampaging across the battlefield to slay her enemies. That seems like your best bet. I mean, like, how do you fight water? Yeah, freezing it seems like a good a good way to go about it by the way uh, in fourth edition oh hydra is a level like 33 solo creature oh shit um okay. because that game goes 30. up to level 30 yeah. yeah um i believe and we're gonna read her stat block later but i believe the version we have in here is like challenge rating 16 or 18 or something like that okay so um, I'll, I'll i'll be pulling that up after our yeah rest, we'll, but... we'll take a look but i i distinctly remember the 4e version of her seeming like whoa powerful compared yeah to... 33 i mean because the Level twenty one through thirty is superhero. Stats, yeah, you're right? basically a, you are a demigod, I believe. So, like the way it works is in fourth edition, is you you have heroic tier, which is one to ten, which is like you know mm -hmm. normal stuff, normal D and D high level fantasy stuff, um, and then you get into paragon tier where you choose a paragon path as like a specialty, like you're not just a ranger, you're a sylvan archer. You're not just a fighter, you're a blade master, you know, yep. whatever that is. And then at level 21, you get into epic and you have what are called your epic destinies. And all the epic destinies are demigod level shit. There's literally one called demigod. So you could just be a demigod. Yeah. Uh, there's we chosen, there's arch fey, there's arch devil, there's arch mage, there's a lot of arches, but like all high 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 level stuff and that just becomes part of your character so not only you're a fighter blade master but you're also a chosen of melora sure yeah yeah so we've definitely done this particular bit on the show before have we okay yeah sorry uh, i'm i'm calling upon it but my memory yeah. of it is so vague that yeah it, so. it required that explanation again, so yeah so. level 33 yeah and you're expected to be a demigod level power in order to fight her Right. All Hydra fights with the violence of the stormy seas. Those that confront her head on are quickly engulfed and begin to drown. All Hydra can call ranged opponents to her, where she might engulf and drown them as well. All Hydra is a master of her element, transforming her water form into highly corrosive salt water. Ooh. Yes. Um, All Hydra's followers are not organized the way other cults or religions are. Um, this is where 4E deviates from everything we talked about before about her like super organized cult. Right. Yeah. Uh, only scarred pirates and lurkers of the deep seas dare call upon her. They know that her wrath seeks followers and unbelievers alike. 
Uh, cults of old Hydra find their homes in the wreckage of shoreline forts, the flooded cellars of coastal cities, and in seaside grottos. Uh, followers of old Hydra know of her thirst for the power contained in the Elder Elemental Eye. She passes this thirst on to her most devout followers. So she's less of a... she. Like, in 4A, she's not trying to become a god, and she's nowhere near becoming a god. She's just very much a primordial. And yeah, that okay. Is what she is. Um, unsavory seafarers whisper Ohydra's name and carry her totems under their sea-stained shirts. Her followers know she is not one to listen to their prayers. She devours whatever and whoever she wants to, loyal or not. Yet these sea dogs cannot help but admire her power. Her most devoted followers take vengeance on the gods and their followers and seek to quench their mistress's thirst for power by releasing the element, elder elemental eye. Followers of Elhydra give their enemies over to the elemental princess by drowning them in seawater. Mm -hmm. The more powerful these victims are, then, um, then brought back to life to serve... Yeah, the more powerful of these victims are then brought back to life to serve the elemental princess as her knights. Okay. So in fourth edition, she has like a knighthood. Okay. Uh, um, and that's probably the most organized faction for her. I know a knighthood sounds so like clean and fun. And I know, crispy, yeah. But this is probably just some fucking pirates. Yeah, it's just probably. Well, it's like the, uh, the way I see it is it's like they're like revenant. They're like... um. They're like Davy Jones dudes. That's literally what they are. <laughs> yeah. They're Davy Jones dudes. You're, it's required. Um, you have. I like the flavor in the second to last paragraph here. Yeah. Sea stained shirts, salty sea dogs. They're literally just like, well, you know, they could probably drink ocean water, and it's probably fine. Yeah, probably for, for them. For them. Yeah. Don't you try it yourself. They just kind of have a constant dysentery. <laughs> so that's the end of the four E, uh, like uh, the four E specific part. Uh -huh. I only have one uh, final fun archimental fact left. Um, Ohydra imics Yancy Bin, who is the evil elemental guy of air, and Ogremosh, which is the archimental of evil earth, mm -hmm. once pursued a legendary artifact known as the Egg of the Phoenix. Uh, this black onyx egg-shaped object increases the user's magical prowess and expands uh, in size and power as the user discovers how to open it further. All of the Archimentals have long coveted the egg and once made a desperate bid to capture it, but they were thwarted by a Kirin aided by champions from the Material Plane. God damn adventurers. I know, right? Well, Hydra still actively hunts for the egg, both to keep it from Imix and to use it against him. Sure, why not? Is anybody, are the others about it? I don't remember that in the Imix. Uh, not this, that it wasn't this there. This came up in all Hydra stuff, so I think, I think they, there was probably a time where they were all in on it, and now everyone doesn't care about it except for all Hydra. Oh, she's except still, for all She's still kind of about okay. it. Okay. Well, that's cool. I mean, yeah. I hope that would be fun. For Alhydra, you know, to get <laughs> yeah, I hope Alhydra. Uh, gets, I mean, gets some, I don't go success. that far to say I hope she succeeds. I just mean like that's some fun. Like I'm glad you get to keep the side quest going. Yeah, You're keeping uh, the hope of the Phoenix egg alive. You think that would be the least likely one to be know, able to I wield about such that, a thing? But I think that's maybe why she's fixed. She's like, oh, it's fire, like Imix. I gotta keep it from him. You know, I feel <laughs> yeah. like that. And Imix is probably like, bro, I'm already fire. I don't want it. Yeah, I know, right? I, if I if I just capture it and drown it in my infinite, it'll soup. be like I drowned Imix himself. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Okay, let's take a short rest. Okay. We've returned. Indeed we have. We're fucking back. Indeed we are. You're back again, Will. And I, yes, I am back again. Um, Will's still kind of recovering a little bit. A little um, bit. So we're taking a break from Ilian and Biren. Uh, yes. For this episode, next episode, no Ilian and Biren. I just sorry, can't handle it. Sorry about that. They did a lot of shopping, and they're <laughs> they're on their way to the next thing. I mean, they had to kill a lot of orcs at the end there. They're, they're still very They're tired. still killing orcs for they're two still episodes. <laughs> They're still killing orcs. Like With the that. help of Shopify. Absolutely. Thanks to Shopify for Thank sponsoring Shopify. those. Yeah. Um, so, uh, in the meantime, you can go to patreon.com slash the dungeon cast. Um, that was the only way Will was able to buy medicine while he was sick. <laughs> it's was so because true. of your guys, your guys' contributions. You guys are funding my healing. Uh, and uh, that's not that far of a stretch. So, um, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you guys so much, um, patrons. We really appreciate you. Um, are, is there something coming up for patrons? Um, well, okay, yes. And uh, the, the custom art piece that we're 
going to use in the in the custom Patreon merch. The yearly annual one finally, finally is done. Yeah. All right, cool. It's gorgeous. It's alien and beer and centric. We're going to slap it on. Yeah, that's fantastic. We're going to slap it on some sort of merchandise. It's going to be decided in the next couple of weeks here, and, and then we're going to start. It's got to be a t-shirt, right? I'd like it to be a t-shirt, uh, but I've had bad luck with Patreon t-shirt We have quality. had bad luck with their so t-shirts. So I kind of want to move away from t-shirts. But it's going to be something, and it's going to be awesome, and you guys are going to get it, and we'll make the announcement as soon as we know exactly what it is, and we have it all lined up. Oh, the but yeah, that is piece so cool. literally finished like yesterday, so yeah, finally done. It's a little late. Sorry, guys, but it's coming your way. I'm very excited about it. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Um... Yeah, please support us on Patreon. Uh, also, thank you guys for doing Apple Podcast reviews. Um, they tr- they trickle in these days. Um, so anybody that wants to get in there and fucking stamp your name, uh, please do. In, in the long rest, we're gonna be doing a, a few new things. Um, less pluggy, more like audience interaction stuff. And uh, podcast reviews are gonna be one of those things. We're gonna kind of rotate between reading YouTube comments, um, fan mail from the PO box and the email. Um, as well as reading podcast reviews, YouTube comments. Did I say that? Um, mm, <laughs> we're going to rotate through those things, <laughs> and I've got a set up. Um, so let's get back to the episode. Though. Yeah, let's get back to all Hydra. So we're going to go over her stat block. Um, but I'm also looking at this 5th edition um, official artwork of Ohydra. And I got to say, uh, she's probably like 30 feet tall here. She looks <laughs> Not fucking, 20. She looks fucking tubular. She looks very tubular. There's a lot of tubes. <laughs> Yeah, man. Like five people could be surfing in five different directions on her right now. Hella cresting. <laughs> There's a guy who's trying to surf in her down there. You see him? Oh, as he's bodyboarding. He's bodyboarding. In the, in he's that not doing board. good. No, he's doing terrible. Oh no, the rocks. I just noticed the rocks. There are rocks. He's about to be pushed upon the rocky shores. Yeah, indeed, indeed, he is. But- Damn. <laughs> Oh, Hydra is reliant on the rocky shores. Some earth involved here. Yes, indeed. Although she'll never admit it. Let's go over stats. Yeah. Um, so we got a huge elemental of neutral evil. Armor class of 18, Natty. Hit points are 324, 24, D12, plus 168, chonk. Speed is uh, 50 feet of, like, I guess, is it all swimming speed? But there's, there's 50 feet of... Of land movement. Of land movement, And yeah. the swim speed is 100 feet. Yes. Which is a lot. Which is a lot. And should be a lot. It should be. But I think it should just be infinity. No, she's got six seconds to get to a place. That's so. true. So, I'm not all water. I, I think 100's good. I think 100's good, and I think 50 on land's good. I'm, I'm happy with the speeds, personally. Is all Hydra the same exact molecules of water all the time? That's a great or question. Are they changing out? I, I think they change out, personally. Yeah, they're I, leaving that merc behind. That's yeah. their waste. Yeah. Sure. Well, maybe. Hydra's constantly shitting. She- <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Or peeing or whatever it is they yeah. do. Excre- excrementing. She's excreting. M- much detritus. <laughs> Saving throws, strength plus 11, constitution plus 13, and wisdom plus 10. We have damage, damage resistances for lightning, bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing from non-magical attacks. Why okay. lightning? Okay, so, well, because the idea here is that, like... This is before Pokemon. She conducts... She conducts the lightning. It doesn't hurt her. Oh, right? just yeah. passes through Indeed. like Last Airbender style. Yes. And I think, um, I don't know if she has a grab attack, but the way I would rule it is if someone's grappled by her and you hit her with lightning, it's going to hurt the, anybody Ooh, touching the water. That's what I would rule. That's tasty. Um, so, so forgive me here on this one, but I really feel strongly that bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage, whether it's magical or not, should be resisted because she's made of fucking water. You know I don't know, what I mean? I don't know, man. Have you ever splashed someone in the pool? That shit just goes. Yeah, I just mean if you, <laughs> if, you if you slash her, I don't care if it's with Excalibur. You're just you're gonna take a chunk of water off her. She's she's gonna be fine. Like I don't know. That's don't just know. she's all water. She's all water. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That's you're you're in the weeds here. The damage immunity is acid, cold, and poison. That's right. But that makes sense. Yeah, it does. This time. It usually does, actually. That's the problem, why poison is so weak. <laughs> it's so strong until it's not. Yeah. Uh, condi- it, it makes combat so long. Condition immunities, charmed, frightened, paralyzed, petrified, poisoned, prone, and restrained. Damn. Can you imagine somebody restraining this? You need a big you old, you need a big old bucket. <laughs> the big a pool. Bucket. Okay. We'll get so, her in my pool, right. guys. Hold on, hold on. What, we're going on a tangent, and I don't care if you cut it or not, but please don't cut it. There is an anime <laughs> on Netflix called Delicious and Dungeon, and I, I tried to tell you about this on Alien Beer. But uh, have you heard of this? Oh, no. Well, I guess, yes, I have. Okay. Uh, by by what you just told me, I okay. guess I have. It's basically, I'm not going to get into the details, it. but essentially there's these 
people trying to get deep into this mega dungeon and they can't afford food so they start cooking the monsters and oh. but it treats when they cook the monsters it's like a straight up like slice of life like really relaxing like and then we do this we skin this and blah blah and it looks delicious though and the show's great the show is very good uh -huh. i'm just gonna say that but in the latest episode yeah it was literally the latest episode they trapped a fucking powerful water elemental between two adamantine pots and <laughs> boiled that sucker down hey so you could do that to to, to old hydra i'm scared of making a steam demon you know what i mean well and then they they made a soup out of it and they ate it. <laughs> This show sounds wild. <laughs> show is incredible, dude. We got blind sight of 120 feet, passive perception of 14. Uh, she speak Aquan. She only speaks Aquan. I we, find that interesting. Yeah, we do that. Like, why don't they all speak Primordial? I don't know. Yeah. Well, if it's four, she would definitely speak Primordial. But, but um, she only speaks Aquan, which means you can't talk to, you can't have a conversation with her unless you happen to know Aquan. Right. Yeah. Challenge rating is 18. Um, 20k. I, I you know See, what I told the you languages was, thing. I knew, I knew it was sub 20. Back to the languages thing, yeah. it, there's an argument for just her knowing Aquan and only Aquan because she's the body. She, she is, she is, I, she I is water. It. Yeah, I absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I get it. I see I see it. <laughs> a challenge rating 18, 20 KXP. We got uh, plus six to proficiency bonus. And now for the uh, action y stuff, empowered attacks. Ohydra's slam attacks are treated as magical for the purpose of bypassing resistance and immunity to non magical weapons. That's fair. Innate spellcasting. All Hydra's innate spellcasting ability is Charisma. Spell save DC 20 plus 12 to hit with spell attacks. She can innately cast the following spells requiring no material components at will. Wall of Ice. That's a good one. I think that's like a level five spell. Uh, yes. At three day, uh, three times a day, Ice Storm. One time a day, Storm of Vengeance, which I, I don't know these spells off the top of my head, but they sound strong as shit. Yeah, I don't know uh, either of those spells off the top of my head. But um, but they're I think they're very high level. She's getting the legendary resistance three times a day. If a Hydra fails a saving throw, she can choose yep. this. Wall of Ice is a sixth level evocation spell, and Think. she can cast that at will. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm sure it's just a big old wall of ice that does yeah. freezy damage to people. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So she can so. control the battlefield. That's fun. Yeah, being able to just control the battlefield on that level is nice. Uh, magic resistance. Um, a Hydra has advantage on saving throws against spells and other magical effects. Water form, Ohydra can enter a hostile creature space and stop there. She can move through a space as narrow as one inch wide without squeezing. Oh, imagine where she can go if she squeezes. Okay, so she can stop there. And so a lot of these a lot of these um, features that allow uh, a monster to move into a hostile creature space and, and stop there usually say, but they take damage for doing so. Not in her case. Now, it would be really cool if she has something in... in it's yet remains to be seen because we haven't finished the stat block. But if she has something special, she can do it. If she's in someone's space, you know, because yeah, I mean, yeah. they should be drowning in there if she is. There are rules for drowning. So yes. I think you just enter rules for drowning and that. Well, point. you should, but there's nothing written here that says you do, but that's what I would do. Uh, a creature can hold its breath for a number of minutes equal to one plus its constitution modifier for a minimum of 30 seconds. I think it should be less than that because um, holding your breath for one minute it can be really difficult for your average person. So I don't think it should be a minimum of one plus. I think it should be just a total of minutes equal to your con mod or whatever. Well, this is the PHP, yeah. um, I believe. So well, I think the PHP is wrong. <laughs> when, it, uh, when a creature runs out of breath or it is choking, it can survive for a number of rounds equal to its con mod, minimum of one round. At the start of its next turn, it drops to zero HP and is dying, and it can't regain... Uh, hit points or be stabilized until it can breathe again. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's you're like dying plus. Okay, but that's still a lot of wiggle room. Like minutes, number one, are a long time in combat, and then plus four rounds of combat or yeah, two or three or whatever. Yeah, I mean the con is good. Con, con is a good is stat. Good. Yeah, uh, let's Never get, dump it. Let's get into the actions. Yeah, uh, multi attack. Oh, Hydra makes two slam attacks or two water jet attacks. That sounds fun. Can't wait for that. Uh, <laughs> slam melee weapon attack plus eleven to hit reach of ten feet. Uh, one target hit for 21 or 3d10 plus 5 bludgeoning damage and the target is grappled escape dc 19 all hydra can grapple up to four targets when all hydra moves all creatures she is grappling move with her that's fun it's fucking like awesome that. yeah water jet is a ranged uh, weapon attack plus 12 to hit range of 120 feet on one target it's going to hit for 21 or 66 bludgeoning damage mm. and the target is knocked prone if it fails a dc 19 strength saving throw also pretty nice and then I remember Imix did this as well, but summon elementals one per day. 
uh, once per day. Ohydra summons up to three water elementals and loses 30 oh, HP yeah. for each elemental she summons. I don't um, like. I don't like the. I know. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, we situationally do, we did this exact good. conversation. Yeah, yeah. It's situationally good. Uh, summoned elementals have maximum HP, appear within 100 feet of Ohydra, and disappear if Ohydra is reduced to, to yeah. zero HP. She's the queen of water elementals. She's basically, besides whatever few gods live there, the most powerful entity on that plane. And you're telling me she can't just summon some water elementals. She has to take chunks of her own body to make these bullshit. Yeah. Uh, well, we the the thing the things that swayed you in the Imix episode, yeah. I believe, were this this thing is outside of their like main area of play i guess it would have to be that like and like if you're gonna have her in her layer or 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 in her domain then there should just be water elemental she doesn't need to summon them yeah and which is true you kind of need a cap on that at some at some level but not 30 hp in that scenario yeah, in this scenario also what swayed you was that the HP output for these water elementals was much higher than the 30. They had like that 100 does, plus HP. That does help me feel better. But like having ran uh, players at like mm -hmm. level 12 and above, 324 HP ain't shit. You, yeah. you guys will chew through that in two rounds if I don't do something about it. Yeah. yeah. I, I think you should have, uh, you know, depending on the circumstances and if this is your combat, mm -hmm. that those water elementals should start there and to have more sort of like, what if all Hydra decides it's time to flee then let me summon some water elementals to go eat up action yeah economy that, that's and, a good that's a, that's a good usage for yeah. sure yeah so, absolutely legendary actions all hydra can take three of those choosing uh from the options below uh you know i i guess i'll just it's good to go over this just as a refresher for people mm -hmm. every mm -hmm. time so yeah uh, only one legendary action option can be used at a time and only at the end of another creature's turn all hydra regains spent legendary actions at the start of her turn crush one creature that Alhydra is grappling is crushed for 21 or 3d10 plus 5 bludgeoning damage. I, that, you got to have this. The language is right. Crush, that's a very surfer it, term. It is. I just watched uh, Finding Nemo with her kid. Mr. Turtle was my dad. You can call me Crush. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, fling costs two action. Two actions. All Hydra releases one creature. She is grappling by fleeing Ooh. the creature up to sixty feet away from okay. her. That's horrifying. That's, yeah, uh, it's great. In a direction of her choice, I would, hopefully. If the flung creature comes into contact with a solid surface, such as a wall or floor, the creature takes one d six bludgeoning damage for every ten feet it was flung, which is just normal fall damage. Although you're not falling, you're, you could get yeah, it, sideways. It's equivalent to fall damage, though. So sixty six bludge. Mm. It's like, I don't know, having them grappled is nice, though, and you're giving that up. 60 feet's far, though. It, you you might want to fling somebody that you don't want grappled. You yeah. grapple them, and then they start doing they stuff start to doing you. They start doing stuff. Yeah, okay, yeah. Fair. It's like, okay, never mind. You're over there. Yeah. Okay, um, definitely. Although having the, um, I guess, like, Shocking Grasp is a really cool cantrip I like a lot, to take a lot, mm -hmm. and it'll give you, like, the ability to escape somebody. You know, they can't take reactions. Mm -hmm. um, that's not really going to do anything here. They're going to mm -hmm. resist the lightning, so... Yeah. I mean, there's probably plenty of other things you can do while you're being grappled that are annoying for the grappler. Sure. Uh, water to acid costs all three actions. Alhydra transforms her watery body into acid. This effect lasts until Alhydra's next turn. Any creature that comes into contact with Alhydra or hits her with a melee attack while standing within five feet of her takes 11 or 2d10 acid damage. Any creature grappled by Alhydra takes 22 or 4d10 acid damage. Okay, so this is the super move you're aiming for. You're trying to grapple four of your party members. Yeah. And then turn her into an acid blob. It's pretty fucking cool. I kind of like it. It's very close to being an ooze, and you know how I feel about oozes. Uh, we like oozes on this show. We like <laughs> we uh, do. the elements, dragons, oozes. oozes. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, I like dwarves. Dwar <laughs> I, I also like dwarves <laughs> uh, and elves. I'm a big elf guy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care if it's cliche. Elves rock. Are we doing the layers? We're doing layers. Let's do it. Um, Alhydra is native to the elemental plane of water, obviously. <laughs> Um, she can be found there in the black depths of vast seas or enthroned among jagged, jagged reefs. Ohydra waits for the chance to enter the material plane through elemental water nodes. I almost thought that said noodles. Or, <laughs> or she, she can encroach through your cup of noodle. <laughs> Ohydra is Italian. She likes you. She likes to go through your noodle tubes into your house. Uh, or when called uh, by the proper rituals, whether she is in her elemental domain or temporarily occupying a water nod. 
node. node. <laughs> I, can't, I cannot say that word. My brain wants to do something else. All Hydra commands the waters around her, and she can shape them to her will. Lair actions. All Hydra can command the waters around herself to take lair actions on the elemental plane of water or in any elemental water node, such as the plunging torrents described in Chapter 5. But sorry, I'm just reading D&D Beyond verbatim at this point. Uh, on initiative count of 20, losing initiative ties, All Hydra uses her lair action to cause one of the following effects. Pools of water in the lair surge out Outward in a grasping tide. Any creature within 20 feet of the pool must succeed on a DC 20 strength saving throw or be pulled up to 20 feet into the water and knocked prone. Water within 120 feet of all hydra becomes murky and opaque until initiative count 20 of the next round. A creature with dark vision can't see through the water and light can't illuminate it. That's so she sp- literally is stinkifying the water she mm-hmm. passes through. She be shitting. <laughs> A freezing fog fills a 40-foot radius sphere with 100, within 120 feet of Alhydra, lasting until initiative count 20 of the next round. Creatures and objects within or beyond the fog are heavily obscured. A creature that enters the freezing cloud for the first time on a turn or starts its turn there takes 10 or 3d6 cold damage. Okay. Uh, and then we have the regional effects, so if you get in close, get yeah. ready. Yeah. Ohydra's presence in an elemental node creates a number of widespread effects, bad weather, strong tides, and increasing aggression from dangerous sea life. Violent downpours become frequent within 10 miles of the lair. Man, I forgot earlier in the episode to ask more about like rain because that's scary. Yeah. Um, a downpour occurs once every 2d12 hours and lasts 1d3 hours. Downpours are so heavy that creatures moving overland travel at half normal speed. Within five miles of the lair, currents and tides are exceptionally strong and treacherous, and ability checks made to safely navigate or control a vessel moving um, uh, through these waters has disadvantage. Aquatic creatures that have an intelligence score of two or lower within one mile of the lair must succeed on a DC 15 wisdom saving throw when they enter the area. If the saving throw succeeds, the creature is frightened and attempts to leave the area, remaining frightened while within it uh, on on a failure. The creature becomes highly aggressive and remains in the area for 24 oh, hours. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, while in this state, the creature gains advantage on saving throws against charm and fear effects. That's a lot of nasty fish, bro. Indeed. Uh, natural spring. The minnows. <laughs> and mermaids, all kinds of shit. I guess there's not No, no, they have, they have higher there. intelligence than two, so they're they're safe from this effect. Yeah, so it's mostly like fish and It's stuff. mostly fish, yeah. and there's a lot of fish in the sea. There's a lot of fish. Some of them have sharp teeth. Some of them can bite through fucking rocks and coral. <laughs> uh, natural springs and pools within one mile of the lair uh, form intermittent pools, intermittent portals to the elemental plane of water, allowing elemental creatures into the mortal world to dwell near those points. That's, okay, that's fun stuff. It's kind of fucked sure. up. Here comes a kraken. I guess. <laughs> that's a big old pool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Krakens so. are like the fucking bishops of, they're like the harbingers and priests of fucking bad shit in the ocean. Bad yeah. water shit. Yeah. Everyone's got a fucking hydra. Or not a, a hydra. Kraken. Everyone's got a fucking kraken, bro. Yeah. If Multiple. You, if you got to water your domain and you're evil, like, pff, get yourself a kraken, bro. What are you At doing? At least a couple. At I, least a couple. Kraken chariot. Kraken submarine. <laughs> Can you imagine? I can. I am yeah, doing it. That's fucking awesome. <laughs> um, do I need to read the rest of no, this? No, the rest is just lore. Oh, we yeah. We did that. This all we did the, that part. Yeah. Hell so, yeah. Um, so that's all Hydra. I don't remember the Emic stat block, but I don't remember feeling as impressed as I do with the old Hydra stat block. Uh, I feel a little yeah. bit more impressed here. I think so, too. It's a little better. Yeah. Uh I like the range of the attack. It's fucking sick. Yeah. I, I do find it interesting that Hydra can make two slam attacks or two water jet attacks. Why can't she do one of each? Hmm? Hmm? Why not? I Why mean, not? it's your game. Yeah. Is All Hydra leg- uh, legacy content now? I see this super. <sighs> Probably L because, yeah. Ha- yeah, yeah, we got this L here, right? Non canon. Half of almost everything Take this L. Yeah, Fivey <laughs> ever produced is legacy content now. I know. And, so weird. Yeah, I saw them talking about it in the Discord. It's like, yeah, half of it's legacy content. Yeah. Um, I um, saw a meme that was like, hey, they missed something sus. You know how they're the, the Hadozi and all that shit? They like sure. tried to rewrite that stuff. That's not legacy content yet. I know, but they yeah. tried to walk it back. Yeah. Um, well, they, yeah. They, there yeah. was something else that they missed. They like, overlooked it because it was like ass like wasn't very good oh, yeah. i wish i remembered with that before i brought it up what I'm, it was i'm seeing if all hydra's in uh monsters of the multiverse and she is not so he, she what's remains that? legacy content yeah the what's the module they're all from uh, uh elemental prin- princess uh, of elemental evil or whatever princess of the apocalypse of the apocalypse yeah yeah so yeah 
Well, yeah. that's what we got for all Hydra. That's yeah. the stat block. That's the uh, layer and regional effects. You got any cool. thoughts about her in general? I don't know. I, I'm more stuck on, like, I like the regional effects for dragons better, especially the the later, the, you know, yeah, um, the dragon stuff. Fizz band fun. stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah that that stuff was, I remember reading that shit and being like, wow, this is tasty. Yeah, Viz Vans was a very tasty book. Yeah, all the ocean stuff seems to recycle itself. Like, I was kind of getting at that with the Krakens and, like, yeah. you know, there's, there is the ocean water stuff, mm -hmm. and there you have it. The yeah. Abolith and like all that stuff. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of it, but yeah, just generally. They've all got it all. They have all got it all, Except right? Except for the Ichita, Itchitachital. No, that's Demogorgon only. Right. Yeah. Colin right. Dagan, too. Oh, well, okay. They they're they're, 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 they're fucking married, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's take a long rest. Okay. Hey everybody, welcome to the long rest. Um, like I mentioned at the short rest, if you guys were there and paying attention, uh, we're gonna start doing the long rest a little different. We're gonna um, do, kind of reserve it for more like the fan interaction stuff. So today, I'm gonna start with some, uh, some, fan, mail. some fan mail, because I went to the PO box after, you know, a little bit of time went by, because I wasn't really getting a lot of stuff there. Mm -hmm. And then there was a lot. Yeah. And we're in March now, so a lot of this stuff is from February, January. Okay, okay. Um, I don't Last think there's months. a lot from December. Okay, that's good. Um, so we're not go we didn't miss too much. No, 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 not too much. Um, and, you know, I I'd gone in December, and then I think I'd gone early January too. But I I went in February, end of February, and I was like, oh shoot, I should mm -hmm. I should more regularly come here. I forgot to. Somebody <laughs> told me that I can set up PO box alerts when we get something, and I forgot to do that. <laughs> uh, hopefully, I'll remember this week. We've got a lot going on. It's tax season. Dude. Um, so I want to read these postcards first. We got two postcards. Um, the first one that I happen to have in my hand, not that it was the first one that came in, is from the Mammoth Cave National Park. It's got a picture of what I assume is the Mammoth Cave National, the Mammoth Cave. Yeah, um, it's very cave-like. Yes, the mites, the tights, they're all the, there. The mites and tights are yeah, both there. Yeah, a lot of cool true. formations. And Absolutely. then there's somebody with a lantern cap. Yeah, that's um, cool. Yeah. Who, who sent it to us? So this is from, um, oh, it was addressed to <laughs> Ill... Lee N <laughs> and Beern, <laughs> CEO of the Dungeon Cast. Oh yeah, uh, you know, and then our PO box address, which is one seven eight four Upland, California nine one seven eight five. It's in the notes. It's in the notes of like all the recent episodes for the last like two years. Uh, happy Valentine's Day, you two. Here's a postcard from the Underdark. Hell yeah. I, I hope your quest for the pot of potential pillage is going well. <laughs> Thank you for your hard work, Matt Stinson. Thank you, Matt. I hope you didn't fart down there. Don't you know, do you that. No, you're not supposed to do that. Um, also, Will, and this oh. is handy to have, this oh, okay. card grants plus one on all saving throws within the Underdark. Oh, nice. Yeah, let's keep that on hand. Yeah, man. I don't um, go to the Underdark uh, often, and by often, I mean I've never been, but the day I do, I'm taking that with me. I'm bringing a bunch of dryer sheets, and I'm loading my <laughs> pants up with them. So if I do happen to fart down there, <laughs> it is phased You're out. Safe for sure. Um, okay. Let's see. Uh, we got another postcard from, uh, who's this? Uh, Christian... Christian, you wrote your your. I think it's Barrera. Okay, that's, that's the last name I've heard before. It's been. It was written into like these. Let me see these Morse code hashes. It was. It very much was. Uh, I I would say Barrera is the way to go. Yeah. And I'm sorry if we got it wrong, Christian, but you did write it amongst a bunch of hashtags. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, I, I don't know what that is, but um, <laughs> uh, we really appreciate it. I I I think this is you on the front what? and like pictures. Of of you and all your family oh, or cool. friends and stuff like there's people dressed up and like there's a there's a picture down here with the people with like giant d20s I think that's freaking cool and just all kinds of stuff um yeah so the postcard from Christian thank you um the the message seemed a little personal so we'll uh, we'll keep that off air but we did read it so thank you very much um and then I I definitely went towards the end of December to the PO box, but we got a Christmas card. Maybe it came in late. It's yeah, I think it must have because it says December fifth. I definitely went like before, before Christmas. Though. Okay, but anyway, okay. Um, Merry Christmas is the front of the, we got a very nice card. Ooh, See, Will very fancy. Yeah. I like the tree. Um, Will and Brian, Merry Christmas. I hope this card finds you well. Congrats on wrapping up the year of the artifact. Woo. Woo. This has been my first year with your podcast, and Aww. it has been great. 
I'm not really playing at the moment, but I'm trying to keep up with the Pathfinder remastered news. There's some big changes to their home setting to get further away from Wizards of the Coast. Uh, I think that's great. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Elements, did y'all get any cool gaming stuff for Christmas? Uh, you should talk about it on the podcast if you did. I'm hoping for some minis to paint. Thank you nice. for all your hard work. Uh, Matt Stinson, the Swords and Stereo podcast. Ooh, another podcaster. That's mm. a cool It's mm. a cool mm. way to, to go about that. Uh, the card says, the, the, the flavor text on the card, your favorite traditions and happiest memories, the closeness of loved ones to a home bright with laughter, a heart filled with joy. May Christmas time bring these to you. <laughs> Very nice. Fuck yeah, Very Matt nice, Stinson. Hallmark or whoever wrote that. Thank you, Matt Stinson. Indeed, Matt. American Gre- It's an American greetings. American card. greetings. I'm glad I turned it over to Chet because it says, P.S., are y'all going to Gen Con or Gary Con in 2024? Those are great questions. No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Mostly because I don't have any time in my life to do anything. That's fucking far, bro. <laughs> that too. Wisconsin's crazy. Although, I'd love to start going to conventions, but I, until sh- this damn book is written, I don't know if I'm going anywhere. I'm sure Luke would have us if we Oh, yeah. Him, but, yeah, absolutely. You know. Um, as, if, if for anyone who hasn't checked that episode out, we interview Luke Gygax, the, who we did. puts on Gary Khan. Yes, in, yes, we did. In rural Wisconsin. Yeah, which is, well, I mean, that's where, uh, that's where they lived. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's funny, my wife's from so, there. So, really? I thought she's your from wife's Wisconsin. from Chicago. Her other, her extended family's from Chicago. Oh, no shit. She, wow. she was born out here and then in California, and then they moved to, to Wisconsin. Wisconsin. She was there until she was like nine. Okay, yeah, she had some childhood out there. My wife, (laughs) Lore. Your wife, Lore. Well, real quick, to answer some of the questions, I don't think I got anything gaming related for Christmas, but I have got a lot of gaming gifts recently. I got a lot, like two or three dice sets from my fiance. Oh, cool. And a couple really cool books, uh, uh, random table books, like random traps and puzzles and stuff like that. Oh, that's cool. So that's to answer your question there. Oh, I saw that book you were talking about. I saw it at Target. Oh, yeah, and I got got a a book made by the same people with, that's focused on traps and puzzles, and it's very good. We should do. Uh, we should. I really want to do a traps and puzzles. I'm, a, I'm a down. Episode. I'm down. I'm down. And maybe we should have that book as our center. Maybe. Uh, maybe. Yeah. Re- reach out to the creators, see if they want to do an interview. That would be super cool. Um, I'm not yeah, scared. We, I'm we not scared could, of you other I was creators like, wait, anymore. Yeah, we can do that. We, we are can do that. <laughs> yeah, People so. seem to want to talk about about yeah. their stuff on our show. I, I think that's a good idea. That is cool. Uh, um, all right, we got a long letter here from December 27th, so I guess I missed this one too, but um, writing you all from Province... Oh, Will and Brian slash Brian and Will. Mm-hmm. Writing you all from Provincetown, Massachusetts, uh, at the other end of Route 6, uh, the Grand Army of the Republic Highway. Wow, that's okay. Which uh, <laughs> used to run all the way to Long Beach, California, until 1964 when California renumbered a bunch of sections, so now it only runs to Bishop, California. So I'm not sure where Bishop is. I do know where Long Beach is. I My brother in law lives there. I think Bishop's like five hours north of us or more. Oh, okay. Maybe okay. maybe it's more I mean, like still, eight hours. It's still across the country. It's fucking far. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, no, well, I'm at the road. The road itself is oh, the road. The, the road does go across the country, yeah. not coast to coast, though, like no. 10. Um, which makes it the second longest road in America, 11th in the world, uh, and in, <laughs> that's in parentheses, and then in double parentheses, still technically the longest continuous in the U.S. since Route 20 has a break where it passes through Yellowstone uh, NP in Wyoming. Uh, okay, sick, sick, sick facts. road lore. Okay, let's go. Anyhow, in all caps, <sighs> I was driving back from my mom's place in upstate New York yesterday after the holidays passed. Uh, holidays and passed the eight-hour drive listening to your older episodes, specifically all of the series on Gem Dragons back to back in order. That must be an interesting because we parsed those out. We so just did. listen to those back to back. Must be yeah. cool. I know it's a bit of a thr- oh, and then the time that goes by in between each one, I've like forgotten stuff. So oh, like, definitely, yeah. definitely. <laughs> I uh, let's see. Uh, I know it's a bit of a throwback, but I did have the urge to write now after listening again. In the Emerald Dragons episode, that's two seventy episode two seventy six. Y'all made mention of the fifty state quarters initiative. Did we? <laughs> yeah, we must have. <laughs> I, I hate to be that nerd, but I did get real excited since I had the book and did end up completing mine back sometime oh, nice. in the early twenty tens. Hell yeah! <laughs> then I never thought about it again until y'all talked about it. <laughs> well, sick memory unlocked. Indeed. That said, I'm actually writing to put in my opinion on the lair, not lair, effects of the gem dragons. The way it is stated when the dragon dies, uh, the animals it attracted and made horny, which, yes, many, many horny lizards, uh, return to normal <laughs> numbers after 1d10 days. Uh-huh. And the way y'all were saying uh, it was that they 
all have a seppuku moment <laughs> or, or launch themselves in that the lava off very the much sounds like what we would say disney did the lemmings wrong and we should talk about it more we should i think it would act more as a mass exodus they all just wander off now that the inexplicable draw that lured them there is gone i guess that makes sense i like my seppuku by lava better <laughs> but you know what that makes sense <laughs> <laughs> they go on to say, I, I mean, it's only six miles. That's not an unreasonable distance for some of those animals to meander out of in a couple of days. Maybe not the amethyst fish. They're kind of stuck in a mountain that's lake. True. With poor horny bastards. I forgot about the gem dragons. That's and a the salty horny. That's a salty lake, bro. Uh, very salty lake. Anyhow, I just wanted to say hello. Love what y'all do, and it strangely makes me miss when I had a longer commute. <coughs> current it's like five minutes on foot uh when i kept up with episodes more easily i will say this for folks who who they primarily listen to podcasts on commute which mm -hmm. i used to be one of these people as well i listen to as much podcasts as i did bef you know, before i worked at home um and the way i do it is i just listen to podcasts whenever i'm doing chores me too <clears throat> yeah if i'm doing dishes i'm listening to podcasts if i'm cleaning the house i'm doing a podcast if i'm making the bed or whatever cooking i'm listening to podcasts yep uh so that's how i do it. eating lunch laundry <laughs> sweeping yeah and watering plants baby there we go feeding my turtle uh shout out to demogorgon shout, shout out, out to demogorgon. demogorgon uh don't fart in the underdark poof, don't fart in the underdark poof, poof oh these little poofs almost look like little wieners if you turn them sideways I'm pretty sure they're farts yeah they're farts for okay. sure but they look like wieners <laughs> okay uh Tebow, <coughs> spelled like thigh bolt, but they provided the pronunciation for me. P.S. I hope the Route Six and Quarter mentions sent y'all on a tangent. <laughs> Actually, it was it was the the horny lizards that sent us on the tangent. Yeah, I do. Um, I think I've said all I needed to say about the quarters in that episode. Whatever you said was said, and that's what was said. We had them. <laughs> we had them. I we had them too. Yeah. Um. I loved all your letters. I saved the best for last. Though. Okay. Yeah. You've been hyping this one up. So what's going on? Well, I let my wife read it first. I was. We, she went to the P.O. box with me. I was like, you can read these if you want to like uh -huh. see what people say. And yeah. she was like, oh, I'm so proud of you. Oh, that's uh, very sweet. So this is from, oh, I won't read your address. That's for me to know. <laughs> Mr. Will Stark and Mr. Brian oh. McDonald. Do I? I don't Thank think, you. I rarely say my last name on the show. You do, but they knew it. Uh, they have our P.O. box 174, Upper California 975. For anybody that wants to send letters. <laughs> Dear Will and Brian, my name is Gray Freeman. I am sending this from my computer class in Western North Connecticut. I am 13 years old oh, in wow. eighth grade. Sorry for all the curse words. And I am sending I'm this not. for a famous person, uh, for a famous person business letter project. I love D&D &D and playing. I just started a campaign where I am DM. Congratulations. Congratulations. Uh, I also love the outdoors and building robots for the FTC competition. Fun. Ooh, hell yeah. Uh, we were allowed to uh, send this to anyone and I chose you guys, and I'm required to ask what technology you use in your daily lives. Okay. Um, Do we want to hit, let's hit, yeah, let's hit that first. Let's hit that, yeah, let's hit that while we're here. Uh, daily lives, uh, I have my... Cell phone. Cell phone, obviously. Uh, he, he means for work. Like, for work, For what yeah. we do for the show. I have this HP PC that I use for mostly for browsing, but also for writing, and then I do a lot of video editing on my MacBook Pro at home. Um most of the recording stuff we keep here at the studio. I had some stuff at the house, but I, I hardly use it because I don't really record there. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think, is there anything else? That, that's about the uh, not a lot of technology. Just a couple of different laptops. One's a Mac, one's a PC. Yeah, we've got... Um, you you do use a lot more. Yes. Uh, yeah. So we've got, like, we've got our professional lighting kind of situation yes. that we use for YouTube. Uh, we have a Canon camera. We we used to use a DSLR camera, but those have like thirty minute limits, recording length limitations. Yeah. But they were a good option when we first started. When yeah, we, they worked. When they we worked. first started, we used cell phones. Will and I. Yes, kinda, we did. We kind of got this thing. It's like, okay, if we want to make a YouTube project, <laughs> we need uniform cameras for our faces. We did. And we we had went the out and bought the LG same V20s. Yeah, or we whatever. went and bought V20s because yeah. they had removable batteries. They did. They did. We also played a lot of Pokemon Go back in those days, and we the did. removable batteries came in. <laughs> yes, we just slapped those chuckers <laughs> in, bro. Um, so aside from the lighting, the, we've upgraded to another Canon. I forget the name of the camera. I'm looking at it right now, but it's, I, I can go look. Yeah, if you yeah, don't mind, uh, it's a handheld, um, and uh, has those limitations have been lifted and and removed. Um, for the microphones, so we, it says Vixia HFG50. A Vixia HFG50. Um, I think the only the reason we got that <coughs> over a different one is because it was better in low light 
which I think the uh, the other ones are better in low light. They have low light uh, sensors, ah. which I think um, Will and I had like a, a lighting issue that we wanted to hash out. Um, and then Will's like, what if we just put this giant light in the back? And I think that kind of, that low light sensor probably <laughs> we'll had something to do with that. just put a beam cannon in the back. It worked. It worked. And it did work. According yeah. to Will. I, um, it worked better. Yes. There's um, always room for improvement. There absolutely is. But we're, we're sticking with our, what we got yeah. right now. Yeah. Our microphones, um, we started out with um, Shure SM57s. Now we're at Shure SM7Bs. The 7Bs, yeah. Oh, really? um, a more standard, you know, she? they take phantom power. Um I've got uh, an audio interface that the microphones plug into. It provides phantom power to the microphones. I also use uh, a MacBook 2020 uh, model, which yeah. uh, it was just time to make that purchase. We'd been coasting on a another Mac for a while, and it really needed an upgrade. Yeah. Um, although I want to upgrade this one again because the 2020 model's got some weird stuff. Yeah. Um, it's mostly the port, the ports and plugs. It's mm. only got two ports on one side. It's very strange. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, I use an iPad for when we're doing the show. Oh, I got criticized for like, oh, that guy's just scrolling his phone. I'm looking no, at the notes. No, he's looking at the notes. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> God <laughs> damn, dude. I know. I can't do anything right. Sorry, I know. <laughs> it's stupid. Somebody calls me out for, for I'm trying to be more involved with what Will's saying <laughs> rather than going on huge tangents constantly. I mean, I like the tangents. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways. Um, I've got, um, yeah, that's the computer... Well, that that was hardware, right? Is there any more hardware? That was pretty about? much. That's pretty much all the hardware. I mean, I have like instruments and stuff. Like, yeah. Oh, and then when it comes to software, I use I'm using uh, Final Cut Pro. Same. I mean, I'm on the Google Drive constantly, and we yes. have a OneDrive. Const I'm constantly using. Yeah, cloud-based then, storage um, has been critical to our operation. Oh yeah, and then um, and then uh, I'm using InDesign for some book stuff. And um, and that's basically it. I'm a software for my end. Yeah, I do Logic Pro X for the audio stuff, uh, mixing and mastering and all that stuff. And um, yeah, I think I mean we've got like props. It's not really like show hardware chargers no, like crazy. Char yeah, I mean I think we uh, we covered it. I think we got it. Yeah. Um, and to continue onward, <laughs> I I use a school Chromebook uh, to do schoolwork, and I also use my phone to listen to your podcast. Cool. I also listen to FBATS and Super Quest Saga. Nice. Hell yeah. Thank you for I'm, supporting those shows. I'm going to buy Star Seeker Guide to Dragon Star. Thank you for supporting the book. I'm sorry it's taking so long. I'm working hard on it, though. It'll be worth it. Yeah. Um, the goal of writing this letter is to show my teacher that YouTubers do write back. Uh, my teacher has never had a YouTuber write back, so I want to prove him wrong, and he will give me extra credit. Please write back to prove my teacher wrong and tell me how. Oh, no. You how use, late are we on this? You use tech in your daily life. Um, I don't think we're super late, and I think if this had like a really stringent time thing, it probably would have been mentioned. Maybe. Um, well, we will write back though. Yes. Um, I choose to write to you instead of anyone else because I uh, love your show. I also want to hear my letter be read on air because that has never happened to me before. Well, here it is. The second best part of your show is the grand adventures of Ilian and Beern. The best part <laughs> is learning everything. Oh, well, that's good. I'm glad. I'm glad you enjoy Ilian and Beern as well because we have a lot of fun making it. But yes, the lore is the the heart of what we do. Yeah, that is the show. Uh, <laughs> I, I love learning about D and D and the random facts that I did not know. Uh, when I have the money to and am not living in my mother's uh, controlled home, I will give you money in Astral Diamond Tier. Shout out to Dima Gorgon. I mean, only do that if you can afford to do that. We'll greatly appreciate it. It's the highest tier possible on our Patreon. We we um, would we would really appreciate that. But, but only please, do that yeah. if it's feasible <laughs> for you. Where it's much more important that you just support the show, which you are doing in spades. So thank you. Mr. Gray Freeman. We don't Thank want you. Yeah, uh, and sincerely, Gray Freeman. We don't want anybody going into debt over the dungeon cast. Yeah, That's not no. what this is about. If you can support us, you should. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'll take the Astral Diamonds. I'm just saying that. For I, real, yeah. I, also, and the sentiment is received. And indeed. This was a really lovely letter. So indeed. And we will write back. We'll probably. Thank you, Gray. Yeah. We'll, we'll probably start writing back after this. Collab on this together. Yeah. Um, but we are going to send it snail mail to you. Um, I'm going to try to get that out tomorrow. Today, cool. today's March fifth as this we record, great. so March sixth, um, and hopefully we get this this <coughs> this man Gray some extra credit. Indeed, he tells teacher we are yeah. podcasters first and YouTubers second, yeah. and but we fuck, are in fact YouTubers. Fuck all them YouTubers that didn't write those kids back. Yeah, indeed. Maybe they get a lot of mail. Yeah, the just, influx just of mail. Depends. Who's who's to say? We don't we, know their lives. We get just the <laughs> enough mail to be able to manage it That's right true. now with That's the help true. of our. Our email support, Modico. Indeed. So thank you. Very true. Um, but yeah, uh, 
that was it for the the P.O. Box mail. Thank you guys so much. We really appreciate that. Um, and with that, we're going to call it uh, – that okay so you're about to hear a thing we're going to pre-record and just slap <laughs> onto a bunch of episodes so this that, is this that's is it. it for the for the audience interaction portion of the long rest we'll see you guys on the other side of this the long, side rest. Of this long rest yeah dude hey everybody we got some news for you uh about the dungeon cast will do you want to hit it off with uh star seeker's guide to dragon star what's going on well oh yeah yeah absolutely so star seeker's guide to dragon star the book based off of super Quest saga the uh space sci-fi campaign that we ran for three years i'm still working hard on it and i wanted to say thank you to everybody who supported us both on kickstarter and the backer kit um but for anyone interested in in backing us on the backer kit i wanted to say that your time is limited i will be closing the backer kit on april 1st charging cards probably in may um i don't have the dates 100 percent on that when it comes to charging cards but i will be closing out the backer kit on april 1st i just really want to wrap a bow on this and again thank you to everyone who has supported and um yeah go ahead and get in there uh it's jackandstar.com uh, if you want to pre-order the books, and there's also the add-ons, there's the dice set, and there's the poster, um, as well as a few other things. And uh, yeah, go ahead and check it out. But just so everyone knows, I will be closing the back again on April 1st. So after that point, pre-orders will no longer be open. Um, everyone who's made their order will be getting their book, and there will be no more orders accepted. So there you have it. Yeah. Um, so check out Star Seeker's Guide to Dragon Star. That's um the, what was the website? Dragonstar.com. 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 It's based off of our actual play D&D game, Super Quest Saga, which we also encourage you to check out right now. FBATS is going to be airing again, um, so there should be new episodes up. Uh, let's see. We got the merch store. Um, we still have uh, are working on our brand new merch store. We're going to have two merch stores. It's going to be a little weird for a second. Yeah, but we have, uh, we have great news coming very soon about the new one. Yeah, so you'll hear that soon. But our regular merch store with just the regular Dungeon Cast stuff is available. There's a link in the description below. You can also follow us on Discord. That's a place we love to interact with fans. Indeed. Uh, so come talk to us there. You can also find us on social media at the Dungeon Cast on X, Mastodon, and Instagram. Thank you to Will for uh, doing stuff like that. And mm -hmm. if you want to support us, one of the best ways to do that is is by leaving a review, telling a friend, and, and by leaving a review, I mean on Apple Podcasts or anywhere you listen to the show, hitting that like and subscribe on YouTube, um, or supporting us on Patreon.com slash The Dungeon Cast. We have early episodes that are ad-free, along with a slew of other material that you can reference, including notes for the show, um, fun skits. Now we have an Alien and Beard tier. We have fucking all kinds of stuff. So go check it out. Uh, and with that, we're going to call it a game. Let's call it a game. We'll talk to you guys later.